Hey, so what's up, rock stars? It's Rox coming to you today with a review for Power Book 2 Ghost Season 2, the season finale, which would also be episode 10, you guys. So we are at the end of the road here. I'm sad, even though this episode was... Well, we'll talk about it, you guys. I am on location. I'm in Nashville. Actually going to be going back to Atlanta later on, but I was like, let me get this video up for y'all today because, well, it, it just called for it to be up today. I still haven't watched Tommy's show. I'm gonna watch it tonight. That review will be up tomorrow, so okay? So I am reviewing it. We going on with this power train, you guys. We stick it to it. Anyway, you guys, the review. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so the show opens with Auntie and Dante. They on his yacht. Remember, he got all these special gifts for her and everything, and she loves it all, you know. But she's still a little salty. She said, Dante, you still lied to me. And he said he had to do what he had to do to make it back to her. But, you know, this whole thing with killing Renzo, they got to be careful. And she was just like, oh, nigga, don't back out of it now. You was with it last night. He was like, I'm still with it. But, you know, we got to make sure that the heat ain't on us. So, you know what? We got to get Kane to do it. And uh, it took a little convincing, but she eventually agreed that Kane needed to be the one to do it. And I was just like, really, Monet? I mean, I really, Auntie, this is what you're doing to your son, your own blood. This bitch is terrible. Selling your child up the river. Now, later on, you guys, we see Ze Zeke at the hangar. He's with his daddy. And you guys, Zeke was impressed. Okay, all oh, this is yours? Wow, look at this. This is real nice. Oh, dang, you got a jet too? <laughs> Nigga, what part of let's get on my plane and fly away forever and ever with your mama and daddy did you not understand? Okay, poor Zeke, you just got to explain everything to him. He was just like, yep. That's all mine. And since you brought up the jet, you know, what you gonna do? Are you gonna come with me and your mama? Because look, you ain't really got no options. You got put out of Stansfield. NBA ain't fucking with you no more. I mean, all you really got is me and your mama. And Zeke was like, well, that's the problem. I know where I'll stand when I'm here, but when I'm with y'all, I don't never know where I stand with Monet. And since you trust her, I don't know if I can trust you either. And Dante was like, no, no, no. Now, don't don't go there. I've never lied to you. And, you know, Dante trying to explain to him, like, you know, it ain't nothing like unconditional love. Your mom and your daddy, we love you unconditionally. Maybe you'll understand it one day when you have a child. I said, Dante, the, the Negro just found out that you was his mama and his daddy 15 minutes ago. Don't be coming with all of these different, you know, trying to tell him about life. And when he have his own kids, if he has his own kids, they're going to know it from the beginning. So Dante, you know, he see he losing Zeke again. So he was like, you know, you see all these beautiful cars here. Look at this nice white. I think it was a Porsche. Okay. He was just like, she's all yours. For real? Nigga, why you are? No, nigga, for fake. Will you take these keys? You know, like, oh, you know, maybe this mama and daddy thing gonna work out okay. Dante skillfully gets Zeke off of the, you know, was auntie with Carrie when she died, you know, tip and, and brings him back into the fold. You know what? It's a seat on that plane for you. As long as you want to go, you can go. All right. Give, give Zeke something to think about. You know, he can't handle too much though. This next scene, you guys, I was just too through with auntie. I was just like, really, are you asking this boy Kane to kill his father? Okay, now, I, you know, as the show went on, I see it was a big plan and everything. But while I'm sitting there listening to it, at this point, I'm pissed off with Monet. I was just like, bitch, ain't nobody, you wildin' for real. He was just like, I can't believe you asking me to kill my own father. And she was just like, I mean, really? You know, he messed up our business. He cut us off. Okay, he shot at us. You gonna let something like that pass? You know how she do with um, Kane. And Kane is just looking like, that's my father. Like, I'm named after him. You know, you really trying to get me to kill? Yeah, I mean, Cain is his firstborn, you know? So he listening to her, and she trying to explain to him what he need to do. And uh, she tried to give him the gun, and he don't take it. So then she got the she got the Jedi mind trick of this. Where's Tariq when we need him? You know, he, that nigga don't need to do nothing. I said, Cain, please don't fall for it. You guys know that Cain, like, Tariq is Cain's kryptonite. So, um... She was just like, basically like, you know, Tariq is going to do whatever she needs him to do. And he was just like, ain't nobody going, you know, Tariq ain't going to kill my dad. If anybody going to kill my daddy, it's going to be me. Just what she wanted to hear. I was just like, Kane, are you really seriously contemplating killing your daddy? Yeah, your daddy done did some shit, but it's all in the name of, you know, trying to, trying to provide for his family and be a drug dealer, of course. But, you know. 
he ain't turned on y'all like that like that you know she didn't made him feel bad that the daddy didn't put him at the head of the family and gave it to drew and i was just like oh you so wrong auntie you so wrong okay so now Cain has agreed that he's going to kill his own fucking father. And of course, she was just like, I told Dante he could trust you. And when when Cain looked at looked at her, I was just like, that look better mean that shit, I ought to kill you for asking me to kill my own damn daddy. But you know, I guess Cain ain't thought it out that far. Now jumping over to Tariq. Tariq is worried about uh, Lauren. You know, he calling her. She not answering the phone. Okay. In a straight player move. He calling her while Effie in the bed sleep. Oh, nigga, you can't even go in the other room in the hallway in the <laughs> damn Tariq is P y'all he P that's the new language I learned he P anyway she wake up and was like who you calling he was just like I just you know he worried about Lauren she not answering the phone and she was just like well you told her to get out of town like she probably got out of town you know she had to ditch her phone so she can't be you know contacted but still he's he's worried you know, Effie don't want to hear that especially since she's the one that killed the girl I said girl that damn Tariq when he find out what you did it is over for you you better get all the dick you can now. <laughs> anyway, Tariq is just like, you know, I got to go to court. But, you know, I just want to ask you something. If I do go to jail, you know, can you go and find my sister for me? You know, because that's still very important to him. And he was like, you the only one I can trust. And she just really felt bad there. And I was just like, ooh, girl, 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 girl. Um, but uh, she tells him that, you know, she'll do that for him. All right, but anyway, he got to get to court. Now, once he gets to court, Davis tells him that they got Trace to testify. And, and Tariq is like, what the fuck? Okay, he was like, what does Trace have to do with any of this? And he was like, well, one time Trace took our drugs. And, and so Kane got pissed. And to teach him a lesson, he took him to the hood and made him sell drugs. Overly Dedicated was like, well, where were you, Tariq, when all this was going on? He was like, I was with your old bitch-ass, uh, sneaky-ass niece. Okay, we can bring her in and she can testify too. Of course, Overly Dedicated don't want to do that. And um, Davis was like, listen, I will sell you and your niece up the river if it, up the river if it means I'm protecting my client. So Overly Dedicated storms off. So then Davis was just like, you know, if if that boy get up there on that stand, it's going to be bad. Kane going to think that you're getting back at him. And, and Tariq was like, yeah, I know. He said he going to think that you're doing it because he put the badge in your, in your um, desk. And Tariq was like, oh, you knew about that? How long you been knowing about that? Listen, Davis is always a few steps ahead of everybody. Let him go talk to Overly Dedicated. And when he leaves, you know, Tariq tries to call Mel, but Mel doesn't answer the phone. So, you know what? We got to go to court. Get in the courtroom. And the reason why he can't get in touch with Mel is because Mel is about to testify. Yeah, Trace is sick. He can't testify, but the prosecution brings on Mel instead. Okay, and that Tariq is like, I said, nigga, I got the bubble guts for you. Okay, I was nervous. I was just like, oh, shit, here he come, and you fixing to tell everything, okay? You talking about knowing where the bodies is buried, right? So he come on in there, you know, Tariq looking at him like, what the fuck? Are you really about to do this? So Mel gets up there. And, um, you know, he explains him and Tariq's relationship, how they met back in high school. And then um, Tariq got pulled out because they accused him of selling drugs. And then they hooked back up at Stansfield and they got, you know, they became roommates. And, you know, then he was accused of selling drugs there, you know, and, you know, prosecuting us like, oh, yeah, just like in Reynolds book. OK, so she feeling herself right <clears throat> So um, then she was just like, so Tariq was suspected of selling drugs at Stansfield. And he was just like, he, you know, Mill look at Tariq and Tariq look at him. And I was just like, oh, Mill, what you finna do? And baby, that damn Mill fell on the sword for uh, Tariq. He was just like, yeah, I'm the one that sells the drugs, sell, sold the drugs in high school, sold the drugs at Stansfield. Okay, they got this whole thing. It's an app, correct, a course or whatever it's called. And, you know, it's supposed to be for a tutoring program, but it's really for the drugs. I mean, he tells the whole thing. I'm the president and CEO. And she was just like, how we know that you don't work for Tariq? You know, and that you're just trying to take up for him. And he was like, because the paperwork here says it, okay, shows it and all. So then she tried to object and Davis was like, this is her, I mean, this is her witness. How she objected to her own witness? And she's like, well, permission to treat him as a hostile witness. So the judge was just like, fine. When, when, when he put all of this out there for everybody, you know, she was like, uh, permission to approach the judge. So Davis and her go up to the judge and he was just like, Davis was like, see judge, that's what I'm talking about. She up here hiding evidence and all of that. Well, of course she ain't knew nothing about this. And um, Davis wants a mistrial, I mean, not a mistrial. He want to dismiss this whole thing. Well, the prosecutor don't want that, 
okay? But the judge was just like, girl, do you really think you're going to get a guilty verdict out of this jury? You look over the jury, they was all like, they was all whispering and looking like, this bitch that came up in here with this shit. So, the judge, in light of this new evidence, he dismisses the case. Tariq was like, I'm free. Yes, you free. And you got Mel to thank for that. Okay, Mel blew this whole shit wide open. Ain't no way that anybody ever doubt. You better not ever doubt that damn Mel ever again in life, honey. When I tell you Mel is down, Mel is down. He is all right with me. Courtney, you get that nigga his own show later on after, you know, we get past everybody else. <laughs> Let him be about book seven or eight or something. So, you know what? Tariq is a free man. Take the ankle monitor off. He gone. Okay, that damn Davis is gone too. He happy. <laughs> Overly dedicated trying to go over there and talk to the prosecutor. And she just was like, nope. Okay, motherfucker, this is the last, the last time you sniff this puss is the last time you gonna sniff this puss. Okay, she walk out. <laughs> Overly dedicated, baby. You is molded. Okay. But, um, you know, we see Davis and Tariq after court. They talking. And Tariq tells him that he want to stop the adoption. And Davis was like, Boy, why you want to do all this now? You just got off this murder charge. Listen, go to school. Get your money later. Go on after your sister. You can get her in. He's like, no, nah, that's what my, my daddy would do. You know, I'm not nothing. I ain't built like that nigga. Okay, he got to get his sister now. You no, know, plus he know his mom would want him to do this since he can't talk to his mom right now. And then he tried to flip it on Davis and was just like, basically, you know, you've been working with me and the Tejadas. Okay, you've been taking money from me and the Tejadas. Okay, you knew about the damn badge being in my drawer. Okay, you did this. And, you know, you're trying to protect Kane as well and all of this. And, you know, Davis was just like, uh, listen here, son. Okay, you don't need to do this right now. You as a hustler. Okay, that's what you're going to do. The Tejadas is never going to let you go and just be free. All right. Besides, I was trying to protect you. Okay, you can go and run down there and tell them that um, I was working with the Tejadas and you at the same time, but then you would also have to let them know that you and Kane have been working together. I didn't know you're not going to do that. You motherfucker, just go on about, you know what I mean? You know, Davis was just like, yeah, nigga, go on about your business, leave me alone. Okay, at the same time, Monet is texting uh, Tariq, talking about she need his help. I was like, Tariq, what? Why are you still fucking with auntie right now? You just got off of the damn murder charge. You know, he was just like, well, okay. You know, now <laughs> Tariq, no, that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. And um, so he was like, I got to go anyway. Okay. When I get my sister back, stop this adoption and everything, me and you are done. Well, Davis was just like, oh, Tariq, you know, he doing proud. You know, one day you're going to make a decent lawyer. And he was just like, oh, whatever, nigga, you know, ain't no decent lawyers out there. <laughs> but um, boom. So when Tariq leaves, Davis calls Kane and tells him the good news. So Tariq goes and meets with auntie. Okay. And she was just like, congratulations. I heard you a free man. He was like, thank you. But I know that ain't why you called me here. Like what you want? Well, she tell him that she want um, him to help uh Kane kill uh Lorenzo and I was just like bitch what you know because she she tried to drop that whole you owe me thing baby I just helped your son stay out of jail I think we is even on this one you know but she's still saying that he owe her so he want she want him to help Kane okay and then he she want also to help with this plan to get Mecca you know she gonna be the one to kill Mecca and all of this and he was just like oh you talking about Dante Spears she's oh you know yeah, I know about Dante Spears, okay? I had his bag, and it had a lot of important papers in there, okay, with his real name in there. And uh, I still got the bag. As a matter of fact, that's the only thing that's keeping me alive right now is I got the bag, and Dante don't know where it's at. Did you know that he was um, a snitch? And she was just like, what? He was like, yeah, he working with the fans. She was like, that nigga gonna get a bullet for everything he ever did. Girl. <laughs> so she got this plan for Kane to act like he gonna go kill Lorenzo, okay? And he got, she gotta make sure that Mecca feel like that's what he gonna do, okay? And believe that because it's all on this loyalty thing and all of that, right? So, um, and she need Tariq to help Kane because Kane can't know all of the, all of the working parts, right? Tariq was like, I mean, fine, that's fine. I can do that, okay? But, um, Mecca gonna give me $2 million. So once he give me my money, Okay, and I know I got that secured. Y'all can do whatever you want to do with him. But please don't kill him until I get my guap. <laughs> okay? And she was just like, fine. I said, boy, you just got off on a damn murder charge. I mean, it ain't even been a fucking full 24 hours. And here you are with this shit. So then, <clears throat> Auntie goes and tells Lorenzo 
the plan, okay? Not the full plan, but enough that he needs to know. And basically how Mecca want uh, Kane to kill Renzo and she trying to get Mecca to believe that he did kill Renzo. I mean, that he did kill Renzo. So they got this whole plan working and Tariq gonna help him out. And, you know, she need all of this to work together. And then she tell him that she gonna be the one to kill Mecca, you know, and all of that. I said, girl, you was doing way too, too much. I mean, this is really an intricate plan right here. Renzo was just like, oh, so you got it all figured out. Okay, she was like, don't I always figure things out when it come to my babies? Like, ain't nobody fixing to hurt my babies. And he was just like, yeah, I know you always protecting them damn kids. Okay, even though them kids can't fucking stand you, especially that Diana Diane child. She is so over her mama. But anyway, well, thank you for admitting that at least, okay, that I always put my kids first. Now, listen, I got to make sure that Mecca think that we gonna, you know, th that this is gonna happen, that Kane gonna kill you or else Mecca gonna kill everybody, including all your kids. You don't want that, do you? Well, of course, Renzo don't want that. Fuck, Renzo just wanted to get out of jail and get back to the damn street drug game. And here you got him wrapped up in all this other bullshit with the feds and the damn snitching and the... It's too much. <laughs> it's too much. So Renzo go back and tell Diana, Diane, and Drew. And of course, they both sort of like, mm, not really sure about that, honey. Diana, Diane, flat out don't believe it. She is suspicious. Okay, but Renzo was just like, la familia siempre primero, mi primero, la familia primero si, la familia siempre primero. The family is first, don't forget it. Okay, we doing all of this to make sure our families stay together. You guys gonna be in? And Drew says, yeah, he in. And Diana, Diana, I mean, well, what is, she ain't got no choice. She in too, but she sure got her good eye. Her good eye on that damn mama. Now, jumping over to Overly Dedicated. So, Overly Dedicated is at his bar, you know, his favorite bar that he go to. And here come the prosecutor. You know, he's like, how did you find me here? And she was just like, you always came here after, you know, you won a big case when you worked for us. Okay. Anyway, she telling him how she feels so guilty. Okay, Lauren is dead. All right, she had a car accident. She was in a car with a bag of money. But, um, you know, her, her family thought that she was visiting friends up in D.C. I said her family thought she was visiting friends up in D.C. with all this shit going on and their daughter's life was already in danger. You okay with this girl just driving up to D.C. or something? I, it just don't, child. I was just like, okay, it's a TV show. Let me just suspend re reality again. So, yeah, anyway, the mom and the daddy, they thought that the girl was in D.C. and she is running for her life, supposedly. She dead in the car with the money. And she feels so bad because, damn it, Lauren dead, Carrie dead. You know, it's all because of her. And, um, well, she doesn't even say it's because of her. She said it's because of his client. And he was like, you know, most times I would agree with you. But, you know, in this case, you know, Tariq didn't have nothing to do with it. Tariq had his ankle monitor on. Did you guys see him leaving? Or, you know, was there any problem? She was just like, no. He was like, okay. All right, you did shit by the book. Like, you know, you took the protect protection off of her because she wasn't a witness no more. Like, what you what else you wanted to do? So then he tried to give her a little words of wisdom. He was like, listen, I was all obsessed and shit with James St. Patrick, Tariq's daddy, okay? I didn't did all kind of stuff, hid evidence, you know, put planted evidence. I got in way too deep, all right? And it got so bad that I lost my job, like Tamika told me I was. He said, and I was so just really trying to get to that damn St. Patrick. I had got a gun. I was going to kill him, but somebody got to him first. All right. So I'm just telling you, you don't want to get that deep. Just walk away. Girl, just walk away. And then she's looking at him like, <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe she's going to feel a certain way about it. She was just like, well, it comes to a point where walking away, you know, makes you an accomplice. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, girl, now this man just spilled out his whole guts. He ain't never told nobody this story out loud. And here you come telling them that he's an accomplice. <laughs> I was like, only dedicated and this the woman you love. Anyway, Tariq, he goes back to the, to the dorm. And Mel is there packing up his shit. Like, where are you going? He's like, oh, my dad done withdrew me from school. You know, I'm going to have to be there with him. He's going to be watching me like a damn hawk. But, um... You know, did you move our drugs? And, and, and um, Tariq was like, no, why would I do that? When would I even have time to do that? Nigga been in court all this time. Okay, well, the drugs is gone. Tariq can't even worry about them damn drugs right now because Tariq about to get two million and be out of the game. But Mel don't want to be out the game, even with all this going on. 
okay mel already know this is how you know it's some white privilege out there he already know that even though he just admitted to this whole long elaborate drug scheme that he gonna be fine okay just a couple of little bumps in the road and then we can get this shit back you know popping no Tariq say he out the game then Tariq is thinking about it so the drugs is gone you know what he bet you was diana diane she probably swiped the code when she was here before but he don't even really care. Like I said, Tariq is out. Then he asked him, like, have you talked to Lauren? Like, what did you do with Lauren? And he was just like, oh, yeah, she drove off without me. He was like, you know, and he was just like, why? And he was like, because I've been trying to call her. She's not answering the phone. Like, I'm just worried. Like, how is she? And, you know, he was just like, I'm sure she ditched her phone. Like, I'm sure she's good. Okay. And uh, Tariq was just like, yeah, you know, you probably right. So they don't even really get to talking about that too long because then Kane walks in the door. Like, y'all just ain't gonna lock this fucking door. This is Stansfield. We don't lock doors around here. Okay. So when um, Kane comes in there and he was just like, so I heard you took care of everything, white boy. And, you know, Mel's like, yeah, I took care of everything and I gotta go. All right. So Mel leaves out and um, it's just Kane and Tariq there. I actually really like Kane and Tariq together. Even though they don't get along, like something about that team just works for me. It's like Kane is the brawn and Tariq is the brains, but them two, if they could just get that shit together and work together, I mean, they would really be a, they would be a force. So anyway, um, Tariq was like, I know uh, your mama sent you down here. You know, she wants you to kill your father and all. And he was just like, yeah, you know, I'm ready to do this shit. And Tariq was like, I know you trying to be tough and you act like you know what you're doing, but you don't know what the fuck you about to do. Listen, I killed my father and I can tell you that shit was not easy. Now, I did that shit to save my family and I know you ain't got no choice and you got to do it to save your family and all because if Dante finds out what's going on, he going to kill all of y'all. Okay, he gonna kill the whole family and he gonna make sure he kill all of them first and then he gonna kill you last so you can watch all of them die. He says, so I understand that you got to do what you got to do and all, but I'm gonna tell you after you kill your daddy, that shit, you ain't gonna be the same ever again. All right. Well, that damn Tar Tariq just told him something to his head, didn't he? So that damn, that cane turn around like, whew, I'm whore. I was like, Kane, you're not whore. You're not whore. Not like that. Who kills their own daddy other than Tariq? Now, Zeke, baby, that poor Zeke is out there just grasping at straws, bless his heart. And so he goes to damn Detective Important. We ain't seen him in a long ass time. So, um, you know, um, he walking, he's just like, y'all still, you still working on the Carrie Milgram case? And uh, D Detective Important was just like, yeah, you know, what can I do you for, son? And he said, well, Y'all still think that her death was a suicide? That man was just like, fool, you the one found the body hanging. <laughs> okay. The damn co coroner's reports say that she killed herself. But I mean, if you got some more information on it, I, I am all ears. And then um, <laughs> Zeke was like, no, nah, I just, I just double check it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I said, Zeke. Baby, what was you going in there to ask this man this for? Why? And why are you so barking up this tree? He cannot let it go. I mean, I guess he was truly head over heels in love with Carrie, and I just did not realize it. I mean, I bless his heart, right? And of course, that blows up in his face because later on, Detective Important has Zeke back down to the damn um, um, police department. He was just like, yeah, when you told me about all of that, you know, it kind of piqued his interest. So he went and checked the cameras in the neighborhood and he saw that Auntie Monet was on her way. Well, we don't know where she was on her way to, but she was a couple of blocks from Carrie Milgram's place on the night that Carrie Milgram was found hanging. Okay? Now, what you think about that? He's just like, oh, well, uh, well <laughs> uh, Auntie, my Auntie was coming to uh, pick me up uh, and then I, I changed my mind and I went to go see Carrie. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess it's all fine then. Okay. So now you've given your your auntie a uh, alibi, but you feeling like shit on the inside because now you know your auntie was on her way at least over to Carrie's house. So that makes her even more suspicious. All right. So, um, well, Detective Important is like, okay, well then, I mean, go on, baby. What, what you want me to do for you now? So that Zeke walk out of there, child, he stumble out of there. He got this look on his face like he want to cry. I was like, Zeke, poor Zeke. I mean, he just one thing after the other, right? I said, he got in that damn car. And he was sitting there like, 
<laughs> Don't cry, Zeke. Don't cry. And Zeke was so disgusting, child. I thought Zeke was, I was like, Zeke, he got that look like, I'm going to go kill my auntie slash mama right now look on his face. I was worried about Monet, but we'll talk about Zeke later. Now, jumping over the tape. We see DNC out with Sweeney, you know, having a drink. And um, DNC shows Sweeney a picture, the picture, the picture. And Sweeney was like, where you got that from? Don't worry about it. Okay. He was just like, I was in college then. Like, you know, this, this is nothing. You know, where'd you get it from? And, in, and then in walks Tate, you know, guilty as charged. <laughs> With that used car salesman look on his face. And uh, Sweeney was like, ain't this about a bitch? So you gonna believe this? And he was like, what, nigga? Okay, that's what you want to say? Okay. And he was like, yo, don't worry about this. You know, in six months, the people will have forgotten about it. And he was just like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. He said, but here's what I can do for you. Okay. We either let this shit come out and, you know, your damn career go down in smoke. Or you can take a break six months. You know, somebody got cancer. You found the Lord or something. Whatever it is for you to just, you don't want to do a governor thing no more. And then... In six months, you decide to run for Senate. Okay, you have the full backing of the DNC and, you know, all of that. So, you know, what do you say? Well, what can Sweeney say? He don't have no choice. I mean, a nigga's in a picture, you know, in blackface with some damn body. You know, we ain't taking that shit, not today. He was like, he about sick of this Black Lives Matter shit. You know, he didn't got past the Me Too mo movement and now this Black Lives Matter shit. Well, yes. What is the choice? Other than you gonna do what we just said you are. So he said he gonna do it. He's like, but good luck working with this motherfucker here. You know, talking about Tate. Because you gonna need it. Now, jumping back over to Kane. So Kane is talking to Mecca. And uh, Mecca's trying to convince him that if he killed his own father that he was named after. His namesake and all. That um, it's gonna prove the loyalty to Mecca. And if that happens, then Mecca's gonna let him run a New York chapter of his business. Kane really still don't really trust it he don't know for a fact and, and Dante was like I really wish I could you know I really wish I could uh prove it to you but the proof is in that bag okay that that Tariq took okay and I need my damn bag back it ain't all about no damn diamond there's some shit in there that's way more important than that and Kane was just like well there you go right there let's kill Tariq I know where he be hanging and everything all right so while he was talking to Mecca, then in, in walk Auntie Mama, you know, and she was just like, what are you guys talking about? So she come in there, she tell Mecca that Zeke ain't leaving with them and neither is Diana, Diana, Drew. I was like, why did you think any of them? Like I said, they grown and fuck it, they don't even like you. But she feel like maybe if they just give Zeke some 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 time, you know, he he will come around. You know, if they leave, then maybe he'll he'll follow eventually. So Dante was like, okay, I can leave. We can leave, that's fine, but I can't leave without my bag. So then he calls Tariq and Tariq was like, yeah, what up? And he was just like, yeah, listen, meet me at the hangar tomorrow. I got, got what you need, you know, bring my damn bag. And Tariq was like, bet. So when Tariq hangs up the phone, we see him with his estate lawyer. And the estate lawyer was like, okay, it's done, Tariq. We didn't stop the adoption. You know, the custody is getting reverted back to you. Then he was like, I'm sorry, Tariq. And he's like, what you apologizing for? Well, here come Overly Dedicated. He had told him Overly Dedicated that he was about to meet with Tariq. So Overly Dedicated comes up to him and he was just like, yeah, I'm sorry to tell you, but your girl, Lauren, she dead. You know, and Tariq has genuine like surprise on his face. Like, what? And then that's when Overly Dedicated realized that Tariq didn't know. He was like, I know, I'm sorry. I, I know you guys was close and everything. All right. What did you know about it? Tariq said, I just told her to get out of town that, you know, it was dangerous for her to get out of town. I didn't know nothing else. All right. He said, well, do you know anybody else that might be after her like that, like that? And Tariq was just like, I got to go. And I was just like, oh, Lord. So the girl is dead. I was hoping she was tucked away safely somewhere. But uh, at least as of now, she is dead, dead. So he feeling guilty now. He goes back. He talking to his girl Effie again. I was just like, I just still don't know if we can trust her, Tariq. But who else does Tariq have to talk to? He feeling guilty. Maybe he can't keep his sister safe. Maybe this ain't the right thing to do. Look, Lauren dead, you know. And, and she was just like, Lauren is, you know, that was part of what happened. You know, you didn't do anything. And he feels like he alone. And she was like, you got people that's in your corner. You got me. You got Mel. He's like, I mean, I know I got y'all and everything. But still, he ain't trying to get his sister killed. He don't want her to end up like um his, like Raina, you know. So he just feeling bad and Effie tried to like, it's okay, don't worry about it. Everything gonna be fine. Overly dedicated, 
he feeling some kind of way about all of these people dying and everything too i mean it just it, it's innocent people that's dying now not well carrie wasn't really innocent but lauren really kind of was she's just you know so only dedicated goes and tells davis how they got blood on their hands you know carrie dead now lauren is dead and it's because of them and and only you know that, that davis was like no nah, that shit ain't on me <laughs> i was doing my job Only dedicated was like they was both on the wire and you let Tariq hear the wire and davis was like listen don't do that okay don't act like you ain't did shit that you shouldn't have did to get the job done i mean you was framing saint patrick Okay, enough to get your ass fired from your good job. Don't come up here with the sanctimonious bullshit. All right, we are the same. Survival of the fittest. All right, so he hurry up and put overly dedicated in this place. Like, don't, uh-uh, no. I, I get paid to do a job and I do it. Don't come at me with the ways that I get it done. All right, enough about that. What you got on the Theo Rollins case? And he was like, oh, that case is, you know, I, I don't even know why he in jail because, I mean, it's clear he didn't do it. I mean, the hell, the, 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 the suspect, the real suspect had to be about four inches taller than him, okay? And uh, so Davis was like, well, make sure you continue working on that case. You know, that is the most important case in this, in this office right now. Then, you guys, we get a blast from the past. We see Tasha, Tasha St. Patrick. Okay, she's sitting in the cabin looking wistfully at a picture of her three kids that she don't have none of anymore. And um, then she hears a car pull up in the in the outside, you know, on the dirt because she ain't look like she got a driveway. And uh, she's all looking like, what, who the fuck is that? Ain't nobody supposed to be coming here. You know, she texts the marshal, y'all coming over here for something? No. Okay, well, now she knows she in danger. So she get her gun and her bag and shit and she's about to run. And then we hear we hear a familiar voice. Oh, Tosh, um, not Tasha, Vanessa Edwards, a special delivery for Vanessa Edwards. And Tasha turned around and looked like, I think I know that voice. I said, I know that damn voice too. It's Tamika. She opened the door and Tamika was just like, yeah, you know, and she was like, what you doing here? She said, well, I got something for you. Okay, and they bringing Yasmin out there. You're, oh, baby, I missed you so much. You know, hey, mommy. And Tamika was just like, okay, Olivia, tell your mama Vanessa what the story was that I told you. So they didn't gave um, uh, Olivia the 411 on her new life, her new identity. She cannot be Yasmin no more. Don't talk about it. Don't be about it. None of that. Okay, you was no longer Yasmin St. Patrick. You was Olivia Edwards, your mama Vanessa Edwards. Okay. So uh, Yasmin can handle that. And then she was like, girl, get your shit, pack it up. I was like, it don't look like she got much up in there. She was like, pack your shit up. You about to be on the move. Now, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, and of course, Tasha want to know where her baby is. You know, I'm sorry, Vanessa. Vanessa want to know where her baby boy is. And she was like, yeah, I don't know who that is that you're talking about, Vanessa. But um, I would advise you to forget about him. Okay. Can't think about him. Don't talk about him. So, um, <clears throat> at the same time, you know, when they had pulled up in these cars, it was two cars. Well, it turns out in the second car, Tariq and Overly Dedicated is in there. And so they had done did him a solid, made sure that Yasmin made it to Tasha. So that was at least good. So I said, if I knew better, Overly Dedicated is getting a little soft on Tariq. But uh, Tariq want to run out there and, you know, hug up with his family. And Overly Dedicated was like, no, 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 you know, you know, that is not the agreement. I don't understand why he can't just be part of a protection program and let his ass go off too. Okay, everybody just be gone. You know, we was all there together. Uh, but um, that's not a part of the agreement. So, you know, Tariq is just in the car watching. Well, I guess there's some solace in knowing that his mom and his sister together. So then Tariq asked him, do he know a Dante Spears? And he was like, of course I know about Dante Spears. The biggest informant for the feds? Yes, definitely. High level, all of that. And then he was like, yeah, I heard that he had something to do, you know, with the whole Lobos. And he was like, yeah, Lobos, Jimenez, you know, all of that. All right. He was like, as a matter of fact, Dante is responsible for them starting the investigation on your daddy. If it wasn't for him, they wouldn't even have done that. And, and Tariq was like, yeah, I kind of thought so. So then Tariq, after he finished with all of that, I'm telling you, this Tariq is on the move all the time. He go meet with Drew. He get Drew up to speed. Okay, we got these bags. It's three different bags. They all look exactly like um, um, Dante bag. Don't ask where he got the damn bags from. I said, nigga, I mean, if it was that important, Dante got a bag that's that common. <laughs> he just went to he just went to the damn sporting goods store and got the damn uh, hunting bag. So, child. So he get him up to speed on the on the bag. He said, Diana, Diane got to have a real bag. All these other fake bags. We gonna. 
you know, make uh, uh, make a people think that we got the bags. They can follow us. You know, we going to get all of his team out on us. And then, you know, Diana going to have a real bag and all that. Make sure Diana Diane don't look in the bag. And Drew says, okay. So they know that Mecca people is on them and whatnot. So Drew goes and gives Lorenzo the bag. All right. Then he tell Diana Diane where the other bag is. Look, when you get the bag, do not open the bag. Do not look inside. She's like, okay. <laughs> I don't know how she said that with a straight face. So now... Renzo goes off, you know, make a people follow him. Um, 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 Drew is about to go off himself. Diana, Diane go off. All right, everybody going off. And um, make a people watching like something's fishy. You know, he about to follow Drew and see what's up. Now, Drew, he about to handle his hardcore killer shit. And here come lover boy Everett calling him, talking about, texting him, talking about he need to meet with him tonight. It's important. <laughs> I was like... Now, Drew, is you going to be a lover boy? Is you going to be a hardcore killer now? You going to be drug dealer, leader of this family, or you going to be out here loving it up with Everett? I mean, you can be with Everett if you want to, but this shit ain't going to work. Now, you going to get that boy killed. You know, Drew, that's where his heart is. So, yeah, he going to meet with his baby later on. Now, the plan is in action, right? <clears throat> Kane and Tariq, they in the car together. And um, Tariq asked Kane, like, did you know Lauren? And he was just like, oh, yeah, I know who that is. He said, but I thought you was fucking that real fine Effie girl. And Tariq was like, yeah, nigga, keep your eyes to yourself, okay? I'm loving the banter. Okay, Kane want to know what's in the damn bag. Don't worry about it, okay? Don't worry about it, sweetheart. And, of course, them two, all, they get to arguing as usual. And, 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 and Tariq was like, nigga, why are you always worried about what I'm doing? Worried about me instead of worrying about the shit that you supposed to be doing? Okay, that's why shit always get fucked up. You so worried about what Tariq doing all the damn time. All right, so while they arguing, <clears throat> then they have to stop because, all right, it's, it's, it's showtime. Renzo Shipman is arriving. All right, so we about to do this. I said, you really about to kill your, you about to kill your daddy boy? So they get their guns, they run inside, you know, and <clears throat> Renzo is there and, you know, he getting his shipment and everything, checking everything with the peoples and, it's all good, and then Kane got a clear shot at him, and he get up, and he pull his gun out, and he got his gun trained on him, and I was just like, wow, Kane, really? And then Tariq stops him. You know what? Don't kill him. All right, he knows we here. All right, now Kane is nervous. He was just like, yeah, he knows we here. It's part of the plan. He had to think, you know, I had to have you think that you was going to kill your father, but you really ain't here to kill your father. We about to kill Mecca people. <laughs> and Kane was like, Phew. that nigga was like, whoo. Dodge the bullet, okay? But Kane ain't knew nothing. Once Mecca people get a little weirded out, you know what they was like, check the bag, see what's in the bag. Well, they look in the bag, that ain't the shit that they thought they was coming to get. So now we got a big shootout. And then Kane, of course, Kane and Tariq, they helping in the shootout with Renzo. So baby, they shoot all the peoples and all of that. And it's Kane and Lorenzo and Tariq. And um, it, it all works out fine. They all still alive and everything, you know. And um, that's when Kane find out that Tariq and Lorenzo, they all knew what the plan was. You know, <laughs> Lorenzo looking at Kane was like, yeah, nigga, I'm going to talk to you at the house about you supposed to be killing me and whatnots. But where's Drew? And he was just like, well, I know where he is. You know, come on, let's go get him. And um, Tariq was like, no, I got to go get the bag from Diana Diane. He was just like, fuck, like, Diana Diane in on this too? Like, cold world. Like, yeah, baby, you was just, you was just a cog. You was just a cog in the whole machinery that is Auntie Monet's plan. So they everybody, so Drew leave, Tariq leave. Renzo go up to one of the dead guys, gets his phone and reads on a text message that he was sent to um to Mecca that um you know BSK is working with him and that they on um you know one of them was on Renzo, the other one was on um Drew, I think it was. Yeah. And so, you know, of course, when when Renzo see that, he was like, Ain't this about a bitch? These motherfuckers turned on me, right? So um, now Renzo got that boiling through his blood. Mecca gets that text message and he's a little nervous. He feels like maybe his cover's been blown. So he let the bosses know, the higher ups, that, you know, maybe his cover's been blown. He ain't real sure just yet, but he gonna be in touch. So he go in another room and he see Auntie. He was like, have you talked to Kane? Like, you know, he should be done by now. She was like, oh, he probably chopping up the body. I was like, that bitch said that so callously. Like, it's just like, like you know, he ran to the grocery store. 
Nigga, this is the woman that you in love with? Somebody that so, so, so callously could kill their own husband and chop up his body? This the bitch you trying to be with, nigga? Now, at this time, Tariq gets to the building with the, with the bag, okay? And when he see him on the security camera, he's, he tell the people down there to let Tariq up. Tariq, just regular Tariq. No coverage on, no hoodie, nothing. All right, and I'm just sitting there looking like, mm, now this is also now why we at least couldn't put a baseball cap on. I mean, Ghost wouldn't have done that shit. Ghost would have had his Nike uh, air fit. What's his outfit he always wore when he was about to kill somebody? Baby had a hat on, his black suit on. <laughs> I mean, his black wet workout gear on. Like, he ain't that damn Teresa. Anyway, <clears throat> When he lets Tariq up, um, you know, um, Auntie was just like, yeah, let Tariq up and then step back. And he was just like, really? Uh, Monet, you trying to kill me? And she was just like, yeah, you know, you turned on me. And he was like, oh, wait a minute, you stole my drugs. I ain't never tried to pull no gun on you or nothing. Okay. And she was like, you lied to me. And so she started telling him all the shit that he did. And baby, that make her still love his girl. He was just like, listen, I did all this for you. All right, I don't care what you going through. Ain't nothing gonna stop me from being with you. Like, I don't know why you can't get this through your thick skull. She got the gun on him. And um, she was just like, yeah, that's not what it's about to be. And child, now talk about the most anticlimactic scene in the whole show. I was just like, so you just shoot him? I don't care how much fucking love there is in the world. Ain't no way I'd have just been standing with, there while this bitch had this gun on me. Like, you ain't tried to wrestle her down because... The girl, you could have got that gun from her, Mecca. You all highly trained, you know, whatever it was. You was in the military and everything. You let this woman just shoot you in cold blood? Child, please. So we hear the gun go off. I didn't even really think she actually shot him. But the gun goes off right when Tariq is getting on the elevator to come up there. And by the time Tariq get there, he got a full hole in his head. He bleeding out. I said, ain't this about a bitch, Mecca? You just sat there and let that girl kill you. Okay. So now Tariq plan is fucked up like, damn, I didn't get my two million. <laughs> I mean, maybe you could take that ring and go pawn it and see what you could do with that. But other than, oh, they don't even have the ring. The ring, Davis got the ring. So that's why he don't even have that. So he was just like, <clears throat> she was like, I had to do it because he found out what was going on. But, um, you know, you free to go. I'm, I'm going to stick to my word. And he was just like, well, seeing how I ain't got my two million. Okay, ain't no money here. Like, I still need my shit, so I guess we still in business together. That Tariq just took that shit with a grain of salt. I was like, this motherfucker is hoard, ain't he? Now, he is hoard. He got hoard, y'all. So I went over to Drew. He over there trying to calm Everett down. Everett didn't found out about the swiping of his badge or his ID. And if Drew had stole it, you know, he got to be able to trust him and all this. And Drew was like, nah, baby, I promise you I ain't did that. Okay. And, uh, but it's time for Everett to go into basketball practice. So, you know what? Have a good practice. And, you know, Everett smiles at him so lovingly. I, that Everett going to be dead by next season, child. So, um, when he go into practice, you know, Drew is getting in the car and here come BSK. All right. And Drew was like, what you doing here? Drew, you don't know? I mean, you ain't got a little inkling why they there? So, child, they get the beating up Drew because they want this fucking bag. Okay. They see the bag that Drew got. After they beat the hell out of him, he knocked out on the floor. How many times he going to spit? I guess that make it you real tough when you just keep on spitting out the blood or whatever. <laughs> but um, they go in the bag and this, the, the shit ain't in there. So they was like, where is the shit, Drew? Uh, thank God that Kane comes and saves the day. Okay, He come beat up all the, the, the two BSK niggas. They about to kill that one of them real good. I think one dead and about to kill this other one. And then Kane was like, no, nah, you know, Drew is about to shoot him. Okay, and Kane was like, no, not right here. Now, you just had a big fight. I'm sure everybody probably, they, somebody probably saw this, but he's like, no, don't, don't kill him right here. Put him in the trunk. Dad gonna make a, an example out of him. <laughs> okay, like the people ain't gonna see y'all putting this man in the trunk after y'all had this full blowout fight in the middle of the, of the damn school thing. But okay, now we see Renzo. Renzo make it back to the house. All right. And Diana Diane is there, and he was just like, okay, baby, you know, he, he made it back. And he was like, Diana Diane, tell me what was in the bag. And she was just like, I didn't look in the bag. And he was like, Diana Diane, we know you nosy, girl. We know you did that. And she was just like, that's fucked up, Poppy. Like, I'm the, I'm the snitch. I'm the snitch in the family. Just because I'll be trying to look out for everybody and 
tell everybody what's going on? He said, now, I ain't never said my daughter was a snitch. I said, you nosy. Now, what the fuck was in the bag? Okay, she was like, well, Poppy, it was a whole bunch of bank paperwork in there. You know, statements for me and, and Drew and Kane and uh, Zeke and, and Mom. Okay, ain't nothing in there for Renzo. <laughs> Anything come for me? Could be. Could be not. <laughs> Rizzo was like a motherfucker can't even get a bank account. This nigga been in jail trying to trying to provide for this fucking family all this time, and this is the things he get. Oh, that Renzo is pissed now. He said, "Baby, I'll be back." Okay, that Renzo is so hot. He go to the hangar, and he see the jet. The jet is getting started up. The, the, the pilot is on there. Okay, then he looking. And he see this figure walking up to the damn jet. Well, it it, it has to be uh, Mecca. It got to be. All right. As far as Renzo concerned, that is that motherfucker. So he go up to the damn thing. <clears throat> he ain't got a clear shot. He don't know who the fuck it is. He just know he think it's Dante. Um, He can't see. It's dark. It, I mean, it could have been a fucking pilot. It could have been anybody. But he get to shooting. And next thing we know, and that's how we know was Zeke, bless his heart. Zeke go, oh! <laughs> I said, that damn Zeke even get shot stupid. So, you know, he fall down on the, I said, oh, oh. And then he, you know, and then all of a sudden, Renzo get this feeling like, oh. You know, he ain't real sure if that was, if that was Mecca or not. And so then he go, you know, the, the pilots and shit was like, what was that? What was that? You know, who's that? What's going on? You know, and that Renzo, then he get the bubble guts too. You know, he go and he see the, the white Porsche or every, whatever. He kind of look in there. He's like, nah, this motherfucker don't look like a white Porsche motherfucker. <laughs> like who I just shot. <laughs> I was like, you didn't do not Yeah, he real nervous. So I'm nervous for him too, y'all. I was like, get the fuck out of there, Renzo. I was like, see, this what happened. When you get out of jail, you still on that old shit. We we 12 years later, we do things different now. See, Renzo done fucked up, right? And you guys, we having to close out of the show. We hear Tariq's voice talking about how you do anything for love, okay? And he going on and on, and, and while he talking, we see them investigating Dante's murder, okay? As the police there, they was all crawling, you know, the, the, his, his penthouse trying to look at things, and... Um, uh, we get another blast from the past, you guys. It's, it's detective extremely annoying, okay, with her tight talking self. So then she looked down and she says, well, you, you waited too long to call me Dante Spears. <laughs> with her fake-ass New York accent. And then um, she asked one of the police, like, y'all got any leads? And the lady was like, yeah, we got something. But, you know, the picture kind of grainy. But it was, you know, somebody that was coming in right around the time. So she hands her the picture and she looks at it, you know, thanks her for the picture and all. Then she opens it back up and looks at it. She was just like, well, 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 Tariq St. Patrick, we meet again. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, that's why the fuck I said you ain't ghosts. If you ain't got your fucking b a baseball cap and your Nike air fit, dry fit uniform on, like, what the fuck? You just walk in there. Child, so here she come back. She gonna be back next season. Then we see Tasha. I'm sorry, Vanessa. We see Vanessa and Olivia. She happy. She cooking for Olivia. You know, here you go, baby. And uh, Olivia was like, Mommy, I got something for you. I think it's from Tariq. Okay. And Ta uh, I'm sorry, Vanessa. I'm gonna have to learn these names, y'all. Vanessa looks at it and reads it. And he was like, Mama, I know that, um, you know, you and Yaz are together and it ain't nothing gonna stop me. Ain't no river wide enough, ain't no mountain high enough that I ain't gonna climb over and get to my damn family. Okay, I just need some money, some power, but it's gonna happen. I'll be there. I'm thinking to myself like, Tariq, why you can't do like David said and finish fucking school, get this heat off of your fucking ass, Get your money, because your daddy said you get this money when you finish and get your damn degree. Get your money, then go get your parents. I, I mean, your, your mama and your sister. I mean, fuck. At least you know that they're safe together. Why is it so important that you do this shit now? You, the block is too fucking hot. You don't need to do this right now. Get your money. Davis was really trying to tell him something, but Tariq is hard-headed. And that Tasha slash Vanessa was just like, oh, my son. Your son is going to go to jail. Then we see Davis. 
all right and he tells him how they still got the white boy working on the case but you know it's it's just a matter of time he gonna get him out of there and he was like little brother i'm trying to tell you i went to the doctor it ain't looking good like I, i'd rather die in jail than you know trading places with you okay little brother i can't let that happen and um uh davis was like little brother he's like hmm, i can kind of think i'm maybe about at least four inches taller than you. I said, oh, 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 four, four, four inches. And didn't did nobody dedicate to say that man was four inches taller? So now we know that Davis was the one who was the the real suspect who really killed whoever it was in this damn case. All right. I said, oh, Davis. So that's why it's so important that he get his brother out of jail, which we kind of had already figured out anyway. The brother's taking the fall for Davis because Davis is the more successful one. And hell, the, the brother obviously is um, is very, very sick and could possibly die. And that's exactly why Davis can't let him die in there. Then we see Tariq and Effie. And baby, I guess they are they are item. Tariq is trying to convince her to transfer to Stansfield. You know, all this driving back and forth to her school down to Stansfield, back and forth. Just come do the drug game down here with me. I said, oh, wait till he find out about what she did to Lauren. Then we see Tate, he in good spirits. He invited his brother down to the, to the office and his brother was like, I told you I ain't fucking with you no more. I done lost my damn job at the NYPD. And he was like, the only reason why I'm here is because you told me you had to show me something. Okay, so he shows him this plaque that he already got made of him being the governor. He was like, you know, you got to run. Okay, and um, uh, uh, Councilman Tate was like, I'm a run and I'm a win. And when I do, I want you to head up my security, you know, as a, you know, as a payback, you know, to you for what you did to me, did for me. And um, he was like, do I look like I'm stupid to you? And he was like, well, that must be a yes. <laughs> and then lastly, you guys, we see Monet. We see Monet at one end of the table. We see Renzo at the other end of the table. We see Diana, Diane, Drew, and Kane. All right. Everybody at the table eating. All's well that ends well, but not exactly because one chair is empty. Our dear Zeke, he's not there. And Auntie Mama looks over at her chair and um, she, she just feels so bad, like wistfully, like if, if Z could just be here, her family would be back complete. Everything worked out except for that one little part, okay? So she's just looking over at the, you know, I was like, girl, maybe you could work it out with them later, but not exactly. Because <laughs> then the phone rings. It's not funny, y'all. Serious. Then the phone rings and she goes and answer it. And they were like, um, uh, is, is detective important? Uh, is this the guardian for um, e Ezekiel Cross? Yes, this is his mother. He was like, oh, okay, mother, <laughs> whatever. Um, I hate to inform you that um, Ezekiel Cross is dead. <laughs> and that's how it is, y'all. <laughs> oh, that shit was kind of anticlimactic as well, but... I sure wanted to see, um, I, you know, Courtney probably was like, now nah, I know Mary J. Blige ain't going to be able to handle this kind of emotions on this. So let me just let it cut here and everybody's imagination can go to work with it. Because Can you imagine Mary J. Blige trying to have a breakdown on camera and all? Boy, that would have been painful to watch. <laughs> so, that's how the shit ends. And um, that Renzo was looking so nervous. I said, poor Renzo. But Renzo is like a hardcore drug dealer. Like, I guess he feels bad because he knows that this is the one thing that Monet is just not going to ever get past, you know, once she find out that he was the one that killed her. Because she going to end up putting two to two together because he wasn't there at the house when he was supposed to be and all of that, you know. So she going to figure it out and then it's going to be some shit with the two of them. But that poor Zeke, even though he dumb and all, child, that Zeke, I mean, Courtney did him a favor by taking him out because really... Everybody has typecast that boy as Zeke, as the dumb one and all. Even that video going around of him dancing and all, everybody just calls him stupid and all of that. So it's just sort of like he needed to get out now while he can so he can save his acting career, child. But it was a good season. It was a good season. This episode still wasn't... Episode 8 is going to go down as the best seat episode in probably the show's history. Um, I'm talking about the history of Ghost Book 2, okay? But um, um, I was satisfied you know it's some it's some like i said it's some shit in there that ain't realistic and silly and all but like i said it is a tv show we just trying to do this for entertainment i'm with it how did you guys feel about the episode all right you guys let me get off of here i'm fixing to go up here and eat with mistal you guys make sure that you rate comment and subscribe to the channel i'm it's rocks the channel is it's rocks everything else i do will be in the bottom bar 
All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.